Yep, we're finally doing this one. You know what they say, keep your friends close and keep your enemies in Kosovo. Hello and welcome to Explained, a web series on the internet where we explain complicated political issues and piss off a bunch of nationalists. In today's episode we'll be covering the province of... no, that's not right. We'll be covering the country of... no, 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 that's not right either. We'll be covering the hellhole from which Satan himself crawled out of, Kosovo. Now, if you're someone who doesn't recognize Kosovo, good for you. Uh, imagine I'm talking about the currently occupational government of Kosovo. And, you know, imagine that I already covered the actual government of Kosovo in this video here. However, if you're someone that recognizes Kosovo, imagine I'm talking about Kosovo's actual government. So, no matter how you look at it, Kosovo is a place which has its own government, otherwise you wouldn't be watching this video. Now, Kosovo's government is classified as a parliamentary unitary constitutional republic, as is the case with most other European countries. If you haven't seen most of my previous videos on the matter, a parliamentary republic is a republic where the prime minister is kind of like the head of state, meanwhile the president serves as more of a ceremonial role. The parliament holds all of the legislative power and they are the ones who kind of create the laws. Meanwhile, the prime minister is the one who holds all the executive power and he puts these laws into action. The judicial power of Kosovo is divided into three courts. There is the constitutional court, the supreme court and the court of appeals, which all kind of theoretically function separately from one another. And they all have their own separate issues, which they specialize in, as you can guess from the names. Within the parliament of Kosovo, there are 120 seats. 100 seats are reserved for the regular Kosovar Albanians, meanwhile 20 seats are reserved for the minorities of Kosovo. 10 of those seats go to the Serbs, and another 10 go to all the other minorities that reside within Kosovo. Who would willfully want to live in Kosovo? I don't know, but hey. Good for them. Now let's talk about the people who make this dysfunctional political entity even less functional. Now, Kosovo is a multi-party government, uh, which means that there's a shit ton of political parties within itself. With that being said, I will only be covering the parties which are within the parliament. First up, we have Vete Vendosje, which translates to self-determination, which is the largest political party in hell and has 53 seats. Vete Mendocia identifies as a progressive, socially democratic Albanian nationalist party. Their three main principles are creating a meritocracy, a developmental state, and a welfare state. Some of their goals include amending the current Kosovo constitution and taking out the Ahtisari plan and Yugoslav legislation, developing the economy of Kosovo through fiscal and monetary policies, developing agriculture, industry and education, creating subsidies for independent food production and combating corruption and the mafia. Another issue for Vedevedosje is the privatization of public companies, which is see as a big no-no and they wish to dissolve the Kosovo Privatization Agency. They also wish to remove Kosovo's third article, which bars Kosovo from unifying with any other states, which would be a stepping stone to unification with Albania. Again, I don't know who would willfully want to live in Albania, but hey, good for them. When it comes to the Serbian question, things get a bit complicated. Vete Mendoza's approach to Serbia is essentially the principle of reciprocity, which means essentially opposing dialogue with Serbia until Serbia recognizes Kosovo as a legitimate country. Человек je došao da kaže, došao sam da te pitam kada ćeš da priznaš nezavisno Kosovo. I moj odgovor je bio nikad. That's all, folks. Their demands from Serbia are for the Serbian government to return the bodies from missing Kosovars buried in mass graves in Serbia, pay war reparations, and return stolen pension funds and artifacts to the Kosovo Museum. They also wish to first start negotiating with the Serbs living within Kosovo first and the EU, and then continue negotiating with the Serbian government. Their current leader is Prime Minister Albin Kurti, and yeah. Moving on, we have the second biggest party within Kosovo, PDK aka Democratic People's Party of Kosovo, which has 18 seats within the parliament. 
Originally, this party was a center-left party. However, due to most of its members being linked to the KLA, the party shifted uh, to the center-right. The party was founded by Hashim Tachi on the principles of national conservatism, social conservatism, uh, Kosovo Albania unionism, and economic liberalism. However, in 2016, Hashim Tachi resigned from the party as he took up the position of Kosovo's president. However, in 2020, he resigned as the president of Kosovo due to being indicted for committing war crimes. Moje tata, zločinac iz rata. Moje tata, zločinac iz rata. Throughout the 2010s, many PDK members have been criminally charged or detained due to abuse of their office power and other criminal activity. Sami Lushtaku, the mayor of Skinderaya, aka Srbica, has been detained to 12 years for war crimes, while he is also being currently investigated for a corruption case. He ran for mayoral re-election and is actually serving uh, in office from prison. I'd say a joke here, but this situation is honestly is completely tragic enough. Uh, their current leader is Enver Hojai, and yeah. Next, we have the third largest party within Kosovo, the Democratic League of Kosovo, aka LDK. Now, LDK could be argued to be the oldest party within Kosovo, as it came to into existence in 1989, before Yugoslavia decided to have an aneurysm and turn the Balkans into the ninth circle of hell. And their original idea was to convert Kosovo into the seventh republic within the federation. However, after Milosevic came into office, he reverted Kosovo's uh, status to pre-1974 and got rid of its autonomy. Because of this, LDK turned to more extreme views and became a major proponent for Kosovo's independence, which then had a party ban in Yugoslavia. Throughout the 1999's war, uh, the LDK was in charge of Kosovo's government, with Ibrahim Rugova leading it. Originally, the party was a far-right nationalist party, uh, no surprise there. However, over time, it separated from the KLA and adopted more European ideas and went more towards the center. After Rugova's death, the party went into internal turmoil as members of the party started fighting for power. Ever since LDK has not recovered and not shows in the polls, basically. Like most other political parties within Kosovo, LDK has a history of being accused of doing a lot of illegal and shady shit, one of those being selling illegal Schengen visas. Their current leader is Lumir Abdic Hiku, and yeah. Next in line is Serbian List, aka SL. Serbian List came into existence in 2014 after a civil movement led by most Serbs decided to form their own political party as a way to protect Serb interests in Kosovo. While SL is a party within Kosovo, ironically enough, they do not recognize Kosovo as a sovereign state. And their main goal is to uphold the resolution 1244, which is a UN resolution that mandated that all Yugoslav troops were to be expelled from Kosovo and have Kosovo be put under UN protection and have Kosovo stay as a part of Serbia, administered by the international community. Other than that, SL also stands for the protection of cultural and religious heritage, uh, as SL views that a lot of uh, Serbian cultural and heritage sites are under attack by the majority Kosovo Albanians, such as the monastery of Yusuf Kidechni. Serbian list considers themselves as a center-right party, and they view themselves as an extension from the current leading party in Serbia, the Serbian Progressive Party, aka SNS. Their current leader is Goran Rakic, and yeah. Moving on, we have the Alliance for the Future of Kosovo, aka AAK. They came into existence in 2001, following the end of the Kosovo War. The party was founded by Ramu Sharknaik, who was then uh, elected as the Prime Minister of Kosovo in 2004. However, in 2005, he resigned as the Prime Minister, as he was indicted for, surprise, surprise, war crimes. He was found not guilty, however, and returned to Kosovo in 2008. Like most other parties within Kosovo, AK identifies themselves as a national conservative party and follows the ideology of Albania-Kosovo unionism, if you can even call that an ideology, economic liberalism and pro-Europeanism. Their current leader is Ramos Hagnai, and yeah. Next is Gucho, which is the newest party within Kosovo, which was founded in 2021 by the current president of Kosovo, Vyosa Osmani. They split from LDK due to differences in ideology and they align themselves as a center-right party. And they follow most other principles that other Kosovo parties follow, basically. Their current leader is Donika Gerval Schwarz. And yeah, and yeah, those would be the major parties of Kosovo. Some honorable mentions would be the New Kosovo Alliance and the Alternative for Kosovo. 
And yeah, let me know. Would you vote for these countries? Do you recognize Kosovo as a sovereign state? Let me know in the comment section down below. My name is Nick and you've watched Living Around a Clean Europe. Grba Kamila, odmah se pomaga.